The BRT project was one of the country's mega projects that was being constructed at an astonishing speed. Then seemingly overnight, workers disappeared. The project that was to be a game changer as far as transportation in the capital city was concerned, stalled. So what happened to the BRT project? There are many questions than answers here, but now the Kenyan historian is piecing information together that could give an idea of what really happened to the BRT. July 2021. The construction of the bus rapid transit system infrastructure along Thika Highway is in top gear. The pace is astonishing. Metallic frames at some median stations like Safari Park, Roy Sambu, Gidurai Kawash, Kahawa Barracks, and Kenyatta University are almost completed. Three months later, the skeleton of the Safari Park Median Station is done. A generator area and the place for the electronic payment system are fixed. Only a few things like fixing the facades are remaining and government officials are optimistic. We have got five corridors. We have uh, corridor number one, which is Mombasa Road. We have corridor number two, which is where we are on Thika Road. We have corridor number three, which is, Jogo, uh, which is uh, Juja Road. Corridor number four, which is Jogo Road. And corridor number five, which is uh, Outer Ring Road. Out of all those uh, corridors, uh, Thika Road, uh, we chose it uh, as a pilot, a BRT, because it, the amount of work that we need to do uh, in terms of design, is much less than the other places. They, we have enough lanes, uh, we have a, a bit of a, a median uh, separation space where, we, for example, where I'm standing, this space here was uh, separating the two, the two sides. The other thing that we looked at is that from where we want to start in Ruiru, we have got foot bridges. So what we are doing essentially is just retrofitting. So what you're seeing here is a prototype of what you expect to see in the other 10 stations. But a lot of fabrication for steelworks is already done off-site. So once we commission this project, we shall be able to move very fast with the 10 stations, and then we'll go to demarcating the corridor. We have said, let's give ourselves timelines for delivery of infrastructure. Between February and June, we should be getting the contractor out, and then during the same period, and we are still, we have already started it, issues to do with acquisition of buses. From this station, others will be put up along the corridor from Ruiru through the central district to the Bomas of Kenya. Nine months ago, the construction of this BRT station was almost done. The steel frame, the floor, the rooftop, the generator area, they were done. It was only remaining few things for example, the facades. But what I'm seeing today is the accumulation of dust on these frames. Dust. When you started seeing these constructions here and you are told uh, probably it will solve traffic, by the use of the BRT system. 
Uh, what did you feel yourself as a city resident? How did you feel? Of course, I was excited uh, that uh, I can be counting minutes, you know, from home to the office. Mm -hmm. But it has not happened. We have still been having traffic in Germany. And of course, I know what happened with the, with the system. We have been waiting. We saw the construction, but nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. Yes. But all of a sudden, work has disappeared and it wasn't complete. Yeah, I had a question, but I didn't know who to ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I'm supposed to ask the questions. Uh -huh. yeah, as a citizen, I don't know who I'm supposed to ask. But of course, I've always seen people working here. But all of a sudden, the people disappeared. They just vanished. Yeah, yeah. And you have no answer. I have no answer. I don't know who to ask. But I'm still waiting for the buses. The system was to offer a comfortable, safer, and reliable transport to the people of Nairobi. It was to sort the chaotic public transport that bedevils the capital city. But today, as we speak, the system remains only but a dream. Because it's happened to do, you can see, like, you can see, you can see, you can see, you can see, like, you can see, you can see, you can see, you can see, you Okay, Nika tu kuna kuna we wali kwa na jare buku kuzi kuzi piti shachini. Then dios dios niche construction ilianza na iku malizi. So we una wana ni kama kuna mtu amechezo. Yeah, tu amechezo apo. I o pesa zimeenda. Bilikuwa na kumbi ya hizo regulations. Ya kujenga. Yo pesa kwa mpya kujenga zimeenda apa zingine. Yo ndo maswali muna juulizi. Eh, bona bona jema liza na oleka pesa kujenga i. Yeah. Okay, like when we are doing your construction, we can do it. We plan it, then we can do it. See if the man will answer. Then in a in a in a job, cut cut the our workers are not there. So when I say that, there was there wasn't proper planning. Yeah, there was no proper planning. Yeah. And this is how and why it's told. By the turn of the year, the number of workers deployed on thicker highway started to dwindle. The pace of construction consequently slowed down. Come February 2022, the promised time for the launch of the BRT and the infrastructure was not yet ready. The number of construction workers on site was just paltry. So what do we know about the construction of the bus rapid transit system along Thika Road? The Kenyan historian has established that there was a contractual breach between the Kenyan government and the contractor, Stakeholder Corporation. So what happened after that? Stakeholder Corporation, which is the contractor, decided to go into what we call a ghost law. Then what followed was slow progress of the construction and later workers disappear. And that is the result, a stalled project. The government, of course, denied stories about the project having stalled and promised to have the BRT running by July 2022. But uh, we have concentrated now on two stations. One, the Kasarani station, which is um, uh, uh, very uh, is quite progressed. We even have uh, ticketing installed. And uh, we are also now coming to uh, what we call the Nairobi Central Station. Uh, substation which is at the railways which currently foundations the photos we got yesterday and uh, the inspection we got yesterday is that we also have the steel works now being carried out but there was a bigger problem that the government did not want Kenyans to know there was no money to pay the contractor and no investor was forthcoming
we will look at why investors were not ready to put their money into the BRT project along Thika Road later in this documentary. The contractor continued building the infrastructure even though at a very slow pace. This was happening at the KU station and the Kasarani Park and Ride station. Only a few builders remained on site. The government claimed that a majority of the work was being done off-site. Uh, yes, they saw the physical work when we were digging a lot, but now they may not see the hard work of fabrication that is in the factories. We believe, and we can promise, that the station at Kasarani and the station at the Nairobi Central Station will be completed, uh, and we hope by the end of March, so that we can start what we call the testing runs for the corridor, which may be first come from Kasarani to the Central Station. After we have tested the infrastructure, we, we, we do some what we call infrastructure readiness uh, tests or, you know, like experimentation. Then we go to the pilot phase where we actually now undertake uh, uh, transportation services as an operation. And then over time, that shall be upgraded to a full-blown operation. It takes time. But it was clear things were not right. A few weeks after government assurance, the contractor withdrew everyone and everything from the construction site. One of the questions Kenyans are asking themselves is how did BRT, an affordable and flexible alternative to light rail, stall in East Africa's economic powerhouse and in a city that is one of the most congested in Africa? To understand where the problem was, you have to comprehend the formation, running and funding of the Nairobi Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, Namata. The authority was formed and has been operating under a presidential executive order issued on the 9th of February. It was to be a platform for addressing decades-old challenges in the transport sector that have bedeviled the capital city and its environs. The biggest traffic congestion. Traffic in Eh, <laughs> Hello, how are you? You're fine? Aha. Uh -huh. As you can see, this is our mode of transport. They are called Matatus. Ah, where are you? Mambo? Who <laughs> Yeah. It's Nairobi for you, man. It's Nairobi, a beautiful city in East and Central Africa. But one thing that you will not miss in Nairobi is traffic congestion. You can't miss it. See, that officer there is trying to open up this artery. It's called Tomboya in the middle of Nairobi Central Business District. And as you can see, traffic is stuck. It's not moving quite literally. In this very executive order lies the problem the matter has been facing and consequently the projects it has been undertaking, like the BRT. It was to be an interim measure pending the enactment of a statute to establish a fully-fledged authority with expanded powers and a broader mandate. But Parliament has never acted upon this order, and what it means, the authority is never in the budget plan, and therefore no established funding. 
the only money Namata gets from the government is through supplementary budget. According to the Auditor General's report of 2020, Namata only managed to fund 53% of its budget. The report states the authority had an underfunding of 532 million 113 thousand 847 shillings or 47 percent of its budget with no funds of its own and heavily relying on the support of the european union the agency has never built capacity to be able to run its operations smoothly so this is where problems facing the construction of the BRT begins. The BRT project is being done under the funding of the government of Kenya, which apparently has no money. So it means the government through Namata has to source for funding Kenyan historian has established that international organizations like Millennium Challenge and Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, wanted to fund the BRT project. But backpedaled after realizing that Namata was not properly established. And with no funding, the government was unable to pay the contractor and consequently the work stopped. Big international companies like Volvo and Scania refused to bid for the tender to provide buses after realizing that there are no clear policies for the BRT project. The Kenyan historian has also established that sibling rivalry with sister agencies like Kura and Kenha has played a part. My name is Anoxicolia and this is the Kenyan historian.